this gentleman here is mine. You see, so I wouldn't say since I don't have you to show off because this man inspired me. You know, he influenced me into the style of singing that I do. But we might try to do a little bit. The only reason, Mr. Jimmy Beaumont, that if we don't do it is because it's so difficult. You see? <laughs> Since I don't have you, first of all, it's not an easy song to sing. You know, it's got a lot of range to it. And then to try to sing it in, I don't have plans and schemes. I don't have hopes and dreams. I stacks down in the basement last evening after I got home from my dance and I started pulling out records and I just couldn't stop because here they are look these are just some of them I didn't have time to go through all the stacks if you know my organizational skills you know that the things are everywhere in the house my wife has often reminded me of that these are just a few of the sounds by this particular duo and every one of these sounds is special and unique. There has never been a duo who has sounded quite like this. I remember when Porky would play a new song by these two. And of course, Porky always pulled that on me. He'd play a new song and then he wouldn't say the name of it. And I'd have to call people on the phone and say, what is that song? It goes like this. And I'd sing it and they'd laugh. But when he played a new song by these folks, every time I knew who was singing it, even if I didn't know the name. Do names like Over the Mountain Across the Sea mean anything to you? Do names like Warm, Soft, and Lovely mean anything to you? How about False Love Has Got to Go? How about that? We hear about that? Have you ever heard of a song called I'll Be Spinning? If there was any duo that ever got anybody into the back seat of a car, it was this one. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my rare and distinct privilege to introduce to you Johnny and Joe. <laughs>
stop. Um, we're going to do a lot of tunes tonight. There are going to be a few you don't like, and there are going to be a few that you do like. But if you give us five or ten minutes to get over with it, um, I don't think I'll be happy, but uh, we're going to try to make you happy.
myself and two other young ladies from Jamaica, New York, got together after school, and we used to go downtown New York and do background for other people's, you know, songs on other people's songs. And finally, somebody said to us, would you girls like to record? And we said, yes. <laughs> so we, um, they put us together with two writers, and we recorded this next song. The song was called A Lover's Concerto. <laughs> and it was done by the toy. Sweet and low 
many times. Yes, God. It was there. I shall always remember. I hope you did. And after two years of listening, we just couldn't see eye to eye. So I have a new love. Yeah. And a true love.
you have it in your kitchen. My bed over 40, huh? I'm still cooking. If anybody in love tonight, I want you to think about this tune. It's by Jerry Butler.
and Joe now. This is the biggie, Joe. Is this for me? This is the biggie. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not gonna tell you. Let's get started. You know, this is the best partner I had since we've been together. We've been a couple of about a couple of years now, right? Say She's what? a marvelous young lady. <laughs> oh, Joe, thank you. I feel the same about you. Oh, yeah. This man is one of the nicest men that I've met in show business since I've been. I really appreciate it. And that's been um uh, <laughs> <three> years. <laughs> You know, I got a special song for Mrs. Klein and Mr. Klein. And I think everyone would recognize this tune. I always got to do this tune. This is not one of my favorite. Warm, soft, and lovely is, but I know this song made a lot of people have babies getting married, doing something wrong in the back of the car in the 50s, coming over these mountains, so I'm gonna do it. But focus, this is for you especially. Now, this guy has known me since I was 16 years old. If I was a girl, I would kiss you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Over the mountain, across the sea, there's a girl awaiting for me. Cross all the river.
Kennedy? Or is Ronald like Kennedy? Tuh. You want people to leave? Leave. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Kenny Mitchell and what with the wind. Do it thing. from the Laurels. Hey, Dick Muse, come on up, Dick. Woo, where's Dick? He's out there. There he is, all right, my man. Okay, second, Mr. Richie Merritt, singing with the hey, Clovers. Let's Richie. hear for Richie. Of the Electrons, the Laurels, the Memories, and the Clovers, yes. Yes. And third, let's bring back Mr. Kenny Mitchell. Yes, 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 yes. Woo. But not least, we have a gentleman here that's a big part of this club. We make a lot of money because of him on the keepsakes. And as you will see, the two awards that our recipients are about to receive tonight are incredible. And it's all because of our next singer here, Mr. Joe Baseman Hill. Woo! All right, Joey, come on down. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as all of you know, there was a transition time between doo-wop and soul. And that was a very difficult transition for many people to make because there was a very distinct difference in the two kinds of music. Many of us made the transition smoothly because of this next gentleman who was able to appeal to both of those particular genre. He has a soaring voice and a soaring personality he is a very classy guy. His list of hit records include This Can't Be True, Hey There Lonely Girl, Never Let Me Go, Am I the Loser from the Start, and go on and on. 
please welcome to Pittsburgh, Eddie Holman. Eddie, let's go, my man. Woo!
Now, if you want to say, do I like songs from the past? I love them. You see, I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. That's where I had my start, my roots. Brooklyn, New York, in the Fort Greene Projects. And uh, I had the pleasure of, of growing up in the projects during the time when Little Anthony and Imperials were hot, Frank and Lyman and the teenagers. I got to see all of those groups. The Skyliners. Ah, yeah! <laughs> You see, it was songs like, Since I Don't Have You, and Tears on My Pillow. Those were the things that influenced me, you see. And those kind of songs live on and on and on. They just never die. Now, what's old about that? Huh? <laughs> now, you bear with me. Let me just look at this little list that I was supposed to put on the microphone. Uh, so that I would know exactly what order we were going to do the songs in. We want to put, you know, you got to have order in life, you know? Not disorder, order. I don't think we got to be 47 years old without disorder. We had some order. Thanks to my wife. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, you know, you know, speaking of singing, I think she said that because she knows that the next song that I'm going to sing is the song that I met her on, you see. Uh, <clears throat> this particular song is an original song. It was written with a buddy of mine who is still a dear friend of mine. He manages uh, a, 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 a social, the Social Security office in Philadelphia. Me and this young man went to high school and college together. His name is James Solomon. So if you ever see that name on any Eddie Holman records, that's my buddy, Saul. We're still good buddies today. And Saul and I almost got not to be good buddies because uh, I was doing a show. I had my very first hit record called This Can't Be True Girl. And I met Sheila, and I liked her, and Saul liked her. And we argued all night long. We almost like not to be friends, you know? And uh, I don't know, maybe it was in the cards for Sheila and I to be together because we're the only ones that are together, right? All our friends? I think, I think one couple got married six months before we, before we did. We're still good friends with them both, but for some reason we've been able to hang in there and I'm very, very thankful. And I want to dedicate this to all the girls out there this evening because I was saying it to you, but I didn't know I was going to marry Sheila. <laughs> It's something called, This Can't Be True Girl. This is one we wrote in 1965.
Angela was always one of my favorite artists, too. You know, come and find out we were both born on the same day, June the 3rd. That's something. And uh, I don't know, boy, life, life is something else, isn't it? Boy, that Curtis Mayfield, another great, great artist. Uh, let me see what else we have here on the list for you. I'm sorry, what'd you say, baby? Huh? Quickly? Put them on. That's the only thing about having your wife in the audience. For all the years we've been married, she's always asking me to sing to her. You know, she's a good woman. I say, sure, what have I got to sing to you? You can listen to the records, right? <laughs> But that, that, you know something, fellas, I find if you treat your wife or your girlfriend, no matter how long you're with them, if you treat her just like you treated her when you first met her when she was like 17 or 18 years old, you'll never have no problems, you know? <laughs> really, really, you know? I know time goes by. Time goes by and time can change us all, but if we keep Keep the essence of that relationship right from the beginning. We'll never have no problem. Let me see what else I got on here. Uh, this is a song, I hope you remember it. <clears throat> the reason I want to do this, uh, my great producer, uh, the late Pete DeAngelis, this was the song that uh, got Pete and I together. Pete said, uh, I was introduced to him by a gentleman in Philadelphia who owned a recording studio where many, many hit records were recorded, like uh, Yes, I'm Ready by Barbara Mason, uh, The Intruders, and The Delphonics. I could go on and on, but Frank Virtue was very, very influential in my career in Philadelphia. He's still in Philadelphia today. Frank Virtue is still around. Uh, he still looks the same. He, and uh, he's the only person that I really enjoy. I mean, as far as an engineer is concerned, that I really enjoy being in the studio where Frank knows how to make a record. Well, anyway, this is the song. Frank introduced Pete DeAngelis and I. Sheila, I'm not gonna talk all night. I'm gonna sing. <laughs> I was told that the people wanted to hear some background about the different songs we made. You know, come on, that'll be good, right? Do y'all wanna hear something about a back, little background history of the song? We're gonna sing the songs for you, too. Just let her know that, so she won't pick on me up here. You know, I get nervous. That's the only person that makes me nervous on the stage. <laughs> uh, the song is one called I Surrender. This is the song that, that Pete D'Angelo said, Eddie, I'm gonna get you a deal with ABC Records. So let me do this for you right now.
thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. You know, it's always be, it's always nice to be where you're wanted. It is. And I feel wanted here this evening. And I want you to know that I don't take this for granted. Believe me, I don't. I enjoy what I do. And it's always good to know that there's still some ears out there that want to hear it. <laughs> so I thank you. I thank you. Now, maybe a little bit later on, we're going to try to do something special. Not to show off. Not to show off. Because this gentleman here is my idol. You see, so I wouldn't say since I don't have you to show off because this man inspired me. You know, he influenced me into the style of singing that I do. But we might try to do a little bit. The only reason, Mr. Jimmy Beaumont, that if we don't do it is because it's so difficult. You see? <laughs> since I don't have you, first of all, it's not an easy song to sing. You know, it's got a lot of range to it. And then to try to sing it in, I don't have plans and schemes. I don't have hopes and dreams. I don't have anything. So this was the title song on, on our ABC album on which Hey There Lonely Girl and It's All In The Game were included. But this was the title song to the album. This was the one that, that, that got ABC. You know, let me just say this. See, with a record company, I don't care 
it's all about luck. It's all about time. It's all about being in the right place. You know, there's a lot of talented people out there. There's a lot of people out there that can sing circles around any hole all day and all night long. You know, I'm sure some of you are sitting in the audience right now. But what happened was not because I have, I think I have such a unique voice or anything. I just think I was in the right place at the right time. Uh, there was a gentleman, as I said, named Frank Virtue and Pete DeAngelis who were very, very instrumental in giving me and making it possible for me to have a career. Then, now, after those guys discover you, so to speak, and give you a break and get you on vinyl, get you on record, then you need somebody to give you a shot at the radio station because they don't know you at the radio stations. You're a stranger. They don't know your name. They don't know where you're from. And all right, so you sound all right. But there are other people who they know their names and they, and they sound all right too, okay? There's a gentleman right here in this room tonight that I'd just like to take a bow. I want him to take a bow. I want to acknowledge the people that has made it possible for me to still be around here singing. <laughs> and Porky Chadwick, one of the greatest disc jockeys of all time. Porky, please stand up and take a bow. Ladies and gentlemen, give this man a standing ovation. Porky Chadwick, one of the greatest disc jockeys of all time. And Porky, I love you. I'll never forget. You gave me the opportunity to be heard here in this city, and I'll never forget it, Courtney. I'll never forget it. I just want the people to know, and I want you to know, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you, and, uh, and I appreciate you playing my records, Porky. Thank you. If it wasn't for Courtney Chadwick, I wouldn't be here right now. That's the man with the place. Lord, and he's sitting right up front. You know, <laughs> you know Porky, I'm not telling you, but I remember, what I remember, I remember when we used to come to Pittsburgh, and, uh, we used to go around to the different show, and people love this man. I mean, I mean, when his car, they run around his car, and they'd be grabbing at him, and, and you know, never mind the singers, they knew he played the records, they wanted to see Porky Chadwick, you know? And he's a legend in his own time, ladies. Give him another round of applause, please. Yeah. Porky, I'm gonna try to do this song right, because my wife wrote it but we're gonna dedicate it to you. Because if you hadn't played the records, no matter what Pete and Frank believed, if you hadn't played it, it wouldn't have meant nothing. So I love you and we'd like to dedicate I love you to Pork and Chadwick.
sing and give you some support. I mean, it it kind of makes me feel a little bit more relaxed. I don't feel like I'm just up here alone. You know what I mean? So give these guys a big round of applause. Take a bow, gentlemen. Thank you. And give these fantastic band a big round of applause. Sincere. Yeah. Thank you, Sincere. Thank you. Well, I didn't come to rush. I think you know that about now. You know, I'm a little on the wordy side. <laughs> I really didn't come to rush. I'm gonna tell you, 300 and some miles is a long way to come. I'm not complaining. I enjoy every mile of it. I, I the anticipation of, of coming here again, being somewhere that means a lot to me because if it wasn't for Pittsburgh, there would have been no This Can't Be True which Porky Chedwick made a hit record. There would have been no Am I a Loser from the Start, which Porky Chedwick made a hit record. There would have been no Hey There Lonely Girl, which Porky Chedwick made a hit record. So it's good to be back home. That's all I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen. It's good to be back home. We're gonna do one more for you. We'll be back, but we wanna do one more. Do we have time for one more? We do or we don't? You tell me. We do have time for one more. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, we'll stay, okay. We'll, yeah, we'll stay late, we'll stay late, ain't no fine. Uh, we, <laughs> we're here to have a good time. Uh, let's do something uh, really special. This is the biggest record that I've ever had. I didn't know this record was gonna be around this many years. I've been saying this thing for, my goodness, since uh, 23, 24 years now? Huh? Hey there, Lonely Girl. Let's, let's, let's do Hey There, Lonely Girl, come on.
Thank you. Let's hear it for Eddie Hobart. Thank you. Come on, let's hear it. Thank Come you, Jimmy Bowen. Thank you, Porky Chadwick. Woo! Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Thank you, Jimmy Bowen. Thank you, Mr. Jones. What a show. Thank you. What a show. Woo! Thank you. I love you. I love you. He'll be back. He'll be back. Mr. Eddie Hobart. Then we're going to take a break, and we got more, baby. Don't you dare touch that dial. One of the finest singers that I've ever heard. Started out in 1956 with the Crescents. Never recorded anything, but sang with a great group. Then in 1956, Jimmy, Janet Vogel, Walt Lester, Jer Joe Versharen, and Jackie Taylor made up a group called the Skyliners. We are blessed, ladies and gentlemen, because this man is our friend, now an honorary lifetime member of SOC. He's done it all, ladies and gentlemen. He's made us proud. He's the greatest voice that I know of. Let's hear a nice round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for Mr. Jimmy Beaumont. Ladies and gentlemen, Jimmy Beaumont. Keep it going, folks. Keep it going. This is a fantastic man. A really, really special person from Pittsburgh who is known throughout the world for some of the classic songs that have made our lives better. Jimmy Beaumont. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dave, Charlie, Monkey. Isn't that beautiful, huh? Let's, let's see this. That is gorgeous, really beautiful. Jimmy, on behalf of Sock, you know, I, I, I feel like a million bucks to be up here with this man. Believe me, I mean, when I was a young kid, I loved oldies, and I never thought that I would ever reach this day to honor such an incredible man. Joey, he did an excellent job on this. Spent a lot of time. It reads as follows, ladies and gentlemen. Society of Oldie Collectors, Jimmy Beaumont and the Skyliners. To one of the finest vocal groups of all time. We are so very proud of your accomplishments worldwide. We have called, we have been blessed because you call Pittsburgh our home, for your home. Best wishes in all you do. Sock, September 12th, 1993. Thank you very much. This is beautiful. This means so much to me. And I want to thank all of you from the bottom of my heart. I'll always remember this night. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you notice what it says, too. It doesn't say one of the greatest groups of the rock era. It says of all time. And that is very, very true. Let's hear it for Jimmy. All right. Before we proceed, Jimmy's very lovely daughters are with us tonight. I'd like to hear a very nice round of applause for Stacy and Christina. Would you please stand, ladies? Very beautiful. Thank you. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, everybody knows I own a record store. And I, and I attribute that to two people. I really, really mean this. Without a disc jockey in Pittsburgh to make all these great R&B sounds and these soul sounds, so popular, you need a man like this next gentleman because he started it all. It's great to be a bragger, you know what I mean? You've got something you're proud of accomplishing in your life. This man has made all of our lives so enriched with the sounds that we're here and we dearly love. 
What can I say about this man? It hasn't already been said. You're all here tonight. I'm sure to see Eddie Holman and Johnny and Joe and Jimmy Beaumont and your friends. But I'm sure most of you are here to pay homage to this next gentleman. Like I said, it's nice to be able to brag to people about the accomplishments you made in life. I feel fortunate, and I'm sure I speak for everybody in the room here, feels just as fortunate not to brag about yourself, but about a friend that we have here in Pittsburgh that's changed all of our lives. And I think that's a hell of an accomplishment. Now I'm gonna tell you a little story about this man. I heard this story and I had to ask some people if it was true. Now we all know Pork had a problem here a while back, had a very serious operation. But the coolest thing about this man is when he rolled him down from surgery, took him in to uh, the room, the recovery room, Porky wakes up, looks up, and all the people are standing there, nurses and doctors. He clears his eyes and looks up and says, heavy. <laughs> this is a true story. When I see him, where my friends see him, the first thing out of this man's mouth is, hey, cool one, this is the pork. He's the greatest. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, we have been blessed twice. Once with Mr. Beaumont, but I'm sure gonna say even more blessed by Mr. Porky Chadwick. Ladies, Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen Porky let's Chadwick. bring Porky up here. Come on, let's hear it for Porky Chadwick. Porky, Porky, come on. This is your daddy o radio, the platter pushing papa, pork the torque the boss man, porculating and getting you porkified with my groove porkology. I'm the music maker for the hip shaker. I'm here for a reason, not the season. Let's get it on at Spinner Sanctum. Everything is all blocked E and all blocked Porky, e. ladies and gentlemen, what a man. Pork, say it, man, do it. All right, initially, I'd like to say something like this. I'm so overwhelmed being surrounded by wonderful people like you. You know the oldies, you love the oldies, and you're very good people. And I do have one wish. I just hope that God satisfies your every deed. Thank you. Okay, before we present the award to Pork, Porky, let's give it for Pork. Come on, let's hear it for him. Woo! Yes, yes, yes. Come on, let's go. Let's hear it. This is the man right here. Real quick, this man was on a station called WHOD, am I right, in Homestead? Which later on became Whammo. He's moved around, and I want to tell you one of the finest moments that he shared with me. The year was the Stanley Theater. You got it? He did a live broadcast to over 10,000 people. Now, during this, I was informed from a historian that the Pittsburgh police caught wind of this. They had such a traffic jam in Pittsburgh. It was phenomenal. So they get, took about half the police force, put them out on the street, and rerouted traffic right back out of Pittsburgh. And I'm talking about people from other states coming in to check this man out. Damn. Ten thousand people. I remember the time National Record Mart down in Market Square made the mistake, and it was a mistake only from the standpoint of what happened to Pittsburgh, of having Porky down there signing autographs, and it shut down Market Square. Nobody could get in. Nope, it was, I don't know how many people were there. Had to be close to 10,000. You know what? What? A lot of people called me the devil. No way. No way. He's our devil. We'll take him, right? We'll take him. Also, ladies and gentlemen, I must recognize a gentleman in the audience who is featured in this award. Chuck Corby is a local man, very excellent singer, great artist, and we've been blessed with a lot of great groups in Pittsburgh. Chuck did a tribute to Porky not long ago, and it touched a lot of people, including my good friend Porky, and we featured it in this award. This award goes to Porky Chedwick. It reads as such, 
Porky Chadwick, in recognition of being the pioneer and originator of rock and roll and rhythm and blues in Pittsburgh and all over the world. The daddy of the radio and the platter pushing papa, known for his generosity and incredible contribution to all in the world of music. We truly thank you and love you. Sock, September 12, 1993. Let's hear it for Pork. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It, it wasn't too long ago that I read in a magazine that the people from Hollywood, when they receive, become a recipient of their glorious awards, the Oscars, and one made a comment on television that the way to show class when you receive these awards is to stress brevity. Don't say too much, just say a few thanks and get your award and leave. Well, I challenge that, and it seems like I'm gonna talk all night, but I'm really not gonna talk all night. I'm just gonna say is, you people made me so proud tonight because of your sincerity. And I have received, and I don't like to talk like this, many citations and a lot of trophies and 40 uh, great awards from the governor, two mayors of Pittsburgh, civic leaders, social groups, religious groups. But this award far surpasses that because of one reason. I'm getting an award for people I love who made me a legend. You people right out here. stop him from clapping because this is your night. I'm going to wait till I get as young as you are, then I probably get my award. But you know, me and Pope go back a long way. When me and Johnny were kids in high school, uh, we had cut a record called I'll Be Spinning. Yes. And it was kind of hard then for black folks. I'm telling you, it was hard. And when I went to Pope, it looked like there was a chance to put meat on my table. And this guy really helped us out a lot. And I want to thank him tonight for everything that he have done for Johnny and Joe, and we have grown great friends through the years. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Joe Rivers. Uh, thank you. While, while I'm up here, I want to commend somebody right to my right. This guy is very intelligent, very brilliant, got a lot of energy, a great disc jockey, Charlie Apple. Dave Raymer, let me say a personal word and I'll make it short. And I want Porky to stay here. Porky said a minute ago something rather ironic. He said people called him the devil in those days. Um, my mom and dad never did. They didn't understand you, but they never called you the devil. As most of you know, I have a little kind of thing about God uh, that I'm involved with. And once a long time ago, I read a quotation. Somebody said, to live your life as though you were the only Bible that people had, because there are many people who never read the Bible. And they said, live your life as though you were the Bible for many other people to see, since they might never read it. And in my formative years, when I was going through what all of us go through, when we're going through adolescence and changes and temptations and not knowing which way to turn and so on, Porky, you were my Bible. Thank you so much. All right, just... I used, I used to say I'm faster than the pastor. <laughs> and you are. <laughs> All right. Before I make my groove exodus right here, I want to acknowledge a request somebody whispered in my ear. Porky, is it possible to lay a few lines on you? All right, yes. All right? Woo! Yeah. So, this is what it's all about. Hey, cool ones, what's happening? All right. This is Pork to Torque, your daddy or the radio, your platter pushing papa, the sound hound with the ground round. No, my name's not John Wayne, it's Pork of the Insane. Not Sergeant York, it's Pork to Torque. <laughs> and, and I used to tell, I used to tell all the girls, 
You don't have to go to Paris for a romance. You get it right here by listening to the sounds on the Daddy or the Radio Show. And I have guys like Charlie Apple and all the disc jockeys doing a commendable thing right now. And I hope you give them the attention that you gave me. Thank you. Hey, let's hear it for all right, Parky Chadwick. Parky Chadwick. All right. He is the greatest. Prison Troopers, how are you? This is your daddy -o on the radio, the platter pushing papa, pork the tork the boss man, porculating and getting right. porcified with my groove porkology. Gentlemen, here he is, Joe Rivers. I am Johnny and Joe. Woo! They tell.
Can I interrupt you for a minute? You notice that we have one more singer up here to put this? It's, it's Doug White, the great bass. Give Doug, Doug White and the Delvankins a big hand. Ladies. Take a bow, Doug. Delvankins, Delvankins, ladies and gentlemen. Come go with me. Many a tear has to fall. But it's all in the game. Thank you. 